Good morning. My name is Nina Mapson Bone, and I'm the Managing Director here at Beaumont Consulting. Today on International Women's Day 2016, I'd like to just spend a bit of time talking about women in leadership and use this video blog just to share my thoughts on how you can um, help be a leader, help women become leaders, how you can get into, uh, keep and retain your good talent from a women in leadership perspective and also what to do if you're a woman trying to get into a leadership position or trying to get to the next leadership position. This is by no means uh, covers every aspect of the topic and there are people far more educated and well researched than I but these are just my observations over the years of working in business as a woman in a leadership position. So let me start by talking about what can you do if you're a woman who's trying to get into a leadership position? Well, my first point would be to really think about what you do and what you say. Well done is better than well said, is the saying that goes, but you do need to talk about what you do too. Often I see women do a fabulous job but not talk themselves up. They feel like they are not allowed to boast, they don't want to uh, overcommit to their capabilities and talk themselves up in the way that they perhaps see other people doing. I would encourage everybody to share their successes. It doesn't mean you have to be arrogant, but you do need to be comfortable talking about your capabilities and confident in talking about how you have contributed to any success that has happened. You can keep it humble by talking about things in a team perspective and what we did as a team and how we achieved that and what your role was in it but you do need to talk about what you do unfortunately people don't just look at the results we see that too often with our politicians we all know that everyone falls for what people say they will do rather than what they actually do sometimes the next thing I would encourage you to do is to really add value uh, and consult. The best leaders I've worked with have been those that have the capability of adding value and contributing to me and my role and what I do, but have the ability to do that in a consultative way. You don't want a leader that tells you what to do, neither do you want a leader that just wants to be your friend but doesn't actually add value to help you do better at what you're doing. So add value to your team, um, to your colleagues if you're not yet in a leadership position, but do it in a consultative way. My third observation would be, be pragmatic. Try and think of the best way to a solution. In any situation, in any workplace, <clears throat> excuse me, there will always be some conflict, there will always be differing opinions, there will all be, always be different ways of doing things. Really put your personal feelings to one side and think about what is going to get the outcome and how can you best help achieve that. And if you do feel yourself getting stressed or angry or involved in a situation emotionally that you shouldn't be, take a step back, take time out and come back at it with a pragmatic approach when you've calmed down. I'd encourage you to avoid politics at all costs. It doesn't serve anyone to get involved in or uh, on side with certain personalities. It's really just best to go about your business and be nice and not get involved in any of the politics that can happen in the workplace. Get yourself a mentor. It doesn't have to be an official mentor. It doesn't have to be somebody um, that officially is mentoring you in some kind of capacity through a program, although it's great if it can be, but find somebody that you admire and respect that you can work with and consult with and from time to time get their thoughts and ideas on how you can progress and what you can do next. I've been lucky to have a few in my life, uh, both male and female, who have really contributed to help me get where I am. And perhaps I may not have realised that they were a mentor of mine at the time because it wasn't official, but looking back, a number of those people have really been very helpful to me from a mentoring perspective. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. If you want to get better and you want to move up or you want to move into a leadership position or take the next step, ask what can I do differently? What do I need to do to get there? What is it that's stopping me from getting promoted today? What do I need to do to give you confidence to back me in that position? Ask for the feedback. And then finally, speak up. Don't be afraid to ask for the next step. Don't be afraid to share the fact that you want the next step. And if you feel like it's the right step for you and you have improved on the things that you've been asked to improve on, don't be afraid to say, so when's it happening? What, what next? It's that way that people know that you're looking to move up and know that they, to keep you, they need to help you move up, otherwise they may lose you. 
That ties in nicely to the next piece around what can you do if you're in a leadership position, male or female, and you're looking to attract, develop or retain your existing um, female leaders and help get a better balance in the leadership in the workplace. The first thing I would think about is what does your environment say about your culture? Often we talk about targets or, or how can you, you know, get women to behave in a certain way to be better leaders. But actually think first, before you even go down that path, think about what does your culture say about the kind of people you attract. You'll be amazed when you really get to the bottom of it how much unconscious bias there is in there and what that's telling people from the get-go about the type of person you're wanting to attract. I'll give you an example. I was once invited on a leadership um, retreat where I was the only female involved in that leadership retreat and a golf game was organised uh, for the day while we were away and the assumption was made without even consulting with me that I wouldn't want to play golf and actually a spa voucher was booked for me during the time that the rest of the team were playing golf. What does that say about the culture of the place I was working at at the time? Have a real think about what you're telling your staff is important and what kind of assumptions you're making about gender. When you're at the attracting stage, when you're looking to hire somebody, really think about um, the types of questions you're asking and the various steps in your recruitment process that will help you determine capability. As I touched on earlier, well done is not always enough. There are lots of people that are very good at talking the talk and some of them do a brilliant job in interview of making it sound like they can do the job. It's really important as a person that's hiring people that you really probe into the results. What did that individual do? What was their behaviour? What was their contribution specifically? And that will tell you more than what the candidate is actually telling you about how they did. And sometimes that might show you that a female candidate is as good as, if not maybe better, than the male candidate. Not always, I'm not making assumptions, but I'm just saying don't take interviews on face value. Really dig deeply to, to, to test the ground further. It's a silly thing, but I've been asked before now, how do we get more women into leadership? And you know what? Hire more women and promote more women. It's not rocket science. There are good women out there. Don't assume there are. Look for them, find them, promote them. You'll be amazed at how well they do. Think about your development programs. We see a lot of turnover when we deal with uh, clients. We see a lot of turnover in the, the leadership space and women um, leaving because they're not getting the development they're looking for. And again, as much as I've just said they need to ask for it, um, we, we need to offer it. We need to think about what are we offering in terms of development and how will that help all of our leaders, not just our female leaders. But let's not just tailor our programs to those who are asking for it. Let's think about what is actually needed and tailor the programs accordingly. Don't be put off by flexible work arrangements. It's scary as a business and I know myself I you know I struggle with this one when somebody comes and asks for some commercial um, flexibility around what they're doing it's difficult to think oh I really need somebody five days not three days or I really need somebody for four days not for 9.30 to 2 or whatever the flexibility is that they might be asking for don't be put off by it a great person three days a week is always going to outperform an average person five days five days a week Really have a think about how you can be flexible in your workplace. But make sure that flexibility is av available for both men and women. Encourage the men in your workforce to take flexible leave arrangements as well so that it doesn't become a female thing. Flexible work arrangements should be there for everyone. You know, in most cases, there is a male parent and a female parent of any child. Let's create flexibility for both people so both people can enjoy raising children and enjoy careers and development without that holding them back. Ask your employees what they want. Ask what is it that's going to help them develop their careers, male and female. Again, this is not just about female, but ask and listen. Don't just listen to the loudest voices. So really listen to what your staff are telling you and make sure that those that are a bit quieter or that aren't going to speak up as much have the chance to really voice what they're after and then think about how you can put that in place to help them. Which then comes to my final point, if you're looking to uh, retain and develop your existing staff to help get a better balance of women in leadership, any time you make a change that affects your staff, 
anytime there's an opportunity for promotion, anytime there's a development opportunity, anytime there's a pay review, think about whether you have genuinely given that opportunity across the board to that spectrum of group of people that might apply for it. Obviously with a career opportunity, not everybody is going to be at a level where they could put their hand up, but don't just assume that the handful of people that you know are the best people for the job. Really think about, is there anybody else internally and externally that might be there that I haven't considered and how do I make it okay for people to say, yes, I'm interested, I want to go for it and genuinely make it okay. Not in a way where the staff are thinking, well, there's not really any point because I know that Bob has already got his name penciled in for that role, whatever it might be. So any change you make, any pay review, any development course, any promotion, make it okay and fair for everybody at the right level to have the opportunity to participate. Good luck. I hope to see over the next generation that we have much more women in leadership. I um, have been lucky enough to enjoy the benefits of it myself over the years and really, really enjoy uh, being a female leader and really enjoy helping others to achieve that. But for me, it's about making the most of everybody's opportunities, male and female, and doing that in a way that benefits the entire organisation and the individuals involved in it. Thanks very much.